Martin, thanks. Now, as we discussed on this show last night, the US based cable giant Liberty Global has been stalking UK rival Virgin Media. And in the early hours of this morning, the companies finally confirmed that they had struck a £15 billion deal. The new company will have its headquarters in the UK and Virgin will retain its brand. But its chief executive will step down when the takeover concludes. Following the deal, about 80% of Liberty Global's revenue will come from five European countries, the UK, Germany, Belgium, Switzerland and the Netherlands. The combined company will have 25 million customers in 14 countries, intensifying competition with Britain's leading pay TV operator B Sky B, the owner of Sky News. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to Liberty Global's chief executive, Mike Fries. I started by asking him, how will he make the whole greater than the sum of the parts? Our business thrives on scale, number one, and adding Virgin Media to the Liberty Global platform is a terrific opportunity to build substantial scale in Europe. Um, secondly, you know, we're in the same business. We operate you know, the same basic products and technology roadmaps, and coming together provides an opportunity for both of us to learn from the things that we're doing, and also some great scale uh, benefits and synergies, uh, both cost synergies and revenue synergies. So we think the companies fit together perfectly. It's a very natural fit and a natural extension of what we're doing uh, in terms of creating value over the last seven or eight years. So we're happy with that. Okay, that's the business logic, but what will it mean for TV viewers? Where's the upswing for them? Listen, Virgin does a fantastic job in the UK market on the TV side. TiVo is leading the connected TV revolution there. Uh, they're growing customers every quarter on the video side. So we're not going to come in and change dramatically what Virgin Media is doing. I'm, I think I'm, we're all very impressed with the management team and the way they've uh, carved out their own niche in that marketplace, which I find to be much more rational and stable today than perhaps it has been in the past. So we're not going to reinvent the Virgin Media strategy. Uh, we're going to bring in some of our own expertise, perhaps, strong relationships with programmers and, and, and content suppliers, but mostly we're going to follow the lead uh, of that Virgin Media has already set. All right, so let me put it another way. Viewers are interested in one of three things, or perhaps three things, better content, better delivery, lower prices. Which of these will you chip in? Absolutely better delivery. Uh, you know, Virgin Media has doubled broadband speeds in 2012, and a significant portion of our capital expenditure in the plan that we put together is going to go towards that very same thing. So we're big believers in the broadband opportunity in the UK market and the fact that Virgin has a superior network to all the other operators, and we plan to push that advantage very, very seriously over the next several years. So for sure, faster speeds, greater connectivity, uh, and greater value as a result. Now, this deal has been a long time coming. The courtship has gone on for many years, as I understand it. Why now? Well, it, it's, a, it's a good question. I think there's a number of factors that play into that. Uh, first of all, um, you know, the relative stock prices are such that knowing we had to issue equity, this was the right time for us. Secondly, the financing markets are very strong, and our ability to pay for the transaction is, uh, is, is benefited by those financing markets. And uh, the stars are aligned from a strategic point of view. I think the Virgin Media Management Team has done a terrific job of, of again, carving out their, their part of that media and telecom marketplace, and we're satisfied that the two companies together will be stronger. So all those things, I think, coming together really made us, uh, made us very comfortable with doing the transaction now. Look, in the end, if you are successful, you're going to have to go after B Sky B customers. It really is a rerun of Malone versus Murdoch, isn't it? I'm not so sure. John talked to Rupert this morning. Uh, I think it's all about rational competition today, uh, not about personalities and drama. Both companies are, are you know, in, in a market that we find to be more stable. There's plenty to go around. We're, we are, you know, happy uh, distributors of Sky content. I don't see us competing with Sky for content. That's not the strategy. The strategy here is to, is to keep the superior network as our main advantage, drive broadband services, have the leading uh, technology platforms for digital video. Uh, we have B2B growth in that market. There's a mobile quad play opportunity. It's a very diverse um, and well-rounded business opportunity for us in the UK market. It's not just about Sky and football. Mike, you talk about rational competition. In the end, competition is competition. And if you start taking eyeballs from B Sky B, well, that's Malone versus Murdoch. You can't play it down. 
Well, certainly we're, we're going to be competing for the same uh, share of wallet. That's by definition an accurate statement. Uh, but I think it's, a, it's the nature of that competition that I'm trying to argue is going to be rational from our point of view. Um, you know, we are growing video customers in that marketplace. The pay TV penetration is relatively low in the UK market, so there's plenty to go around. It's only 54%. Uh, there's markets we operate in where the pay TV penetration is 70 or 80%. So there's still room for growth in that marketplace, and, and we think there's plenty of room for both companies to succeed. Now, Mike, your shares have fallen by about 5% today. The investors are not exactly doing backflips. Some are telling me that, hey, Branson gets the cash and we get the debt. Uh, listen, I'm not sure that's the case. Uh, we've gotten very positive feedback. The, the, the share price today could be a function of a number of things. Uh, a lot of volume. You've got ARBs who come into the stock at a time like this. Uh, you've got uh, a number of factors that can move the securities for unrelated reasons, certainly not reasons related to the deal, the price, or the value. So uh, I think it's going to sort itself out and steady here in the next several days. The stocks are trading in a very close proximity to one another from an implied price point of view, and uh, you know we're, we're okay with that. We're not worried. And Mike, it would be bad manners to end this interview without saying, Happy birthday, 50 today. <laughs> Is it going to be a, a champagne celebrate, yeah. a celebration lunch for you? Yeah, as soon as I get out in front of the camera, I might just do that. <laughs> well, you've probably earned it. Well done. Many thanks for your time. Mike Freeze. Next on Jeff Randall Live.